Hi, this is Dr. Fox, and let's discuss the innervation of the eye. In this video, we'll discuss the somatic and autonomic innervation of the eye and elements of the orbit. And let's start with one of the more obvious features, the optic nerve, or cranial nerve 2. The optic nerve originates at the optic chiasm, and it enters the orbit through the or optic canal of the sphenoid bone. The optic nerve is conducting back special sensory vision uh, from the, uh, the retina back to the brain. The next nerve is the oculomotor nerve, or cranial nerve 3. So I guess we're doing this <laughs> in linear cardinal fashion. The oculomotor nerve originates in the midbrain, and it picks a course that runs in between the posterior cerebral artery and the superior cerebellar artery, meaning if there's any sort of impingement from either of those arteries, if there's an aneurysm, it's going to affect downstream the targets of the oculomotor nerve. The oculomotor nerve travels within the lateral wall of the cavernous sinus, and it enters the orbit via the superior orbital fissure. The oculomotor nerve is um, somatic efferent to a variety of extraocular muscles, including the levator palpebri superioris muscle, the superior rectus, the medial rectus, and the inferior rectus muscle, as well as the inferior oblique muscle. But it's not done yet. The oculomotor nerve also is going to have a parasympathetic component to it. So there are fibers of the oculomotor nerve that are preganglionic parasympathetic. These are going to ultimately synapse in the ciliary ganglion, which can be found sort of inferomedial along the, uh, the optic nerve. And the postsynaptic parasympathetic fibers are going to serve two sets of muscles. First, the sphincter pupillae muscles. These are the muscles which are going to constrict the pupils during a parasympathetic response. And the other are the ciliary muscles. The ciliary muscles, if you recall, are embedded in the ciliary body. And as they contract, they pull on the supportive structures out to the lenses so as to bend the lens for accommodation. Next up, we have the trochlear nerve, or cranial nerve 4. Uh, trochlear nerve is unique among all the cranial nerves in that it originates in the dorsal brainstem, whereas most others are uh, ventral brainstem. It travels through the lateral wall of the cavernous sinus, and it enters the orbit via the superior orbital fissure, um, just like the oculomotor nerve did. And it is somatic efferent to the superior oblique muscle. Recall that the superior oblique muscle has a tendon that goes through the trochlea, which is in the trochlear fovea of the frontal bone. So the trochlear nerve serves the superior oblique muscle, which is also served by the trochlea. Next up, we have the abducens muscle. So we are skipping any contribution for uh, trigeminal nerve for the time being. The abducens muscle, or uh, uh, nerve, uh, or cranial nerve 6, um, originates in the brainstem, and it is unique in that it travels through the cavernous sinus, meaning that it is very vulnerable to uh, a cavernous sinus thrombosis. It then enters the orbit through the superior orbital fissure, much like the oculomotor and, superior, and uh, trochlear nerves do. And it is somatic efferent to the lateral rectus muscle. Recall that the abducens abducts gaze. Now let's take a step back to um, branches of the trigeminal nerve. In particular, the ophthalmic nerve or division of the trigeminal nerve, aka V1. So there are three divisions of trigeminal nerve, ophthalmic, maxillary and mandibular, V1, V2, and V3, respective. And the ophthalmic nerve is mostly somatic afferent from the orbit, the eye, and some of the surrounding areas. Some of its notable branches 
include the frontal nerve. Uh, so here's trigeminal. There's V1, V2, V3. Uh, V1 is pretty robust as it um, enters in through the superior orbital fissure. And it has branches. Um, one that we've discussed, the lacrimal nerve that conducts somatic afferent from the lacrimal gland. There's also a rather robust frontal nerve. This frontal nerve is going to ramify into a more lateral supraorbital nerve and a more medial supratrochlear nerve. The supratrochlear nerve is a little smaller than the supraorbital nerve and it's going to conduct sensory information back from uh, the medial aspect of the forehead, uh, the frontal sinus, as well as the medial superior palpebra. Superorbital nerve is also conducting information back from uh, the medial and anterior forehead, as well as superior palpebra. That uh, superorbital nerve is going to have medial and lateral branches as well. And then there's also a nasociliary nerve uh, that is deeper. So let's take a look at that. So um, the frontal nerve has been removed here and we can see the nasociliary nerve of V1 traveling down. Um, it is somatic afferent from a variety of structures. Uh, many of the paranasal sinuses, the nasal cavity, the conjunctiva of the eye, palpebrae, and the eye directly, but via the ciliary ganglia. It also is going to be used as a hitchhiking pathway. Surprise, surprise. Another branch of trigeminal used as a hitchhiking pathway. But in this case, for postganglionic sympathetic fibers rather than parasympathetic fibers. So these postganglionic sympathetic fibers are coming from paravascular plexuses supplied by the um, superior cervical ganglion coming in through internal carotid artery. Um, and these are um, going out to the dilator pupillae muscles. So these are going to be very active during a sympathetic fight or flight response and it will make the, uh, the, the pupil larger. So let's take a look at um, some of these bizarre pathways and look at the intermediate uh, between the, uh, the nervous system, the ciliary ganglion, and the eye. So here is the ciliary ganglion. It's located sort of inferolateral uh, to the optic nerve. Um, so to see it, you'd have to incise the optic nerve out of the way if dissecting from uh, a superior position. The ciliary ganglion is going to serve the eye through what are known as short ciliary nerves. So there are a bunch of small nerves that go out directly to the, uh, the globe of the eye from the ciliary ganglion. And these are going to conduct um, several types of fibers. So first of all, uh, there will be, in addition to uh, direct innervation from the nasociliary, um, afferent or somatic sensory fibers that pass through the short ciliary uh, through the ciliary ganglion and go back to the, uh, the nasociliary nerve. Let's kind of erase some of these here so that we can see these pathways better. There are also going to be uh, postganglionic parasympathetic fibers from the ganglion. Uh, these are going to be in purple here and we can see them going out and they're going to serve uh, the ciliary muscles and the sphincter pupillae muscles. So we can see them kind of going out. There are the ciliary muscles, there are the sphincter pupillae muscles. So these are going to be responsible for uh, narrowing of the pupil as well as accommodation. Now keep in mind those preganglionic parasympathetic fibers are coming from the oculomotor nerve. So here you can see them in blue coming along and jumping and then synapsing in the ciliary ganglion. There are also going to be postganglionic sympathetic fibers. Uh, these 
postganglionic, let me erase these, these postganglionic sympathetic um, fibers, and you can see them in red here. Uh, this is also from the nasociliary. They pass through the ciliary ganglion, and they go out to the eye, and they're going to serve uh, intraocular vessels, uh, so some of the arterioles um, within the uh, the um, the choroid layer of the eye, so they're responsible for vasoconstriction there. Um, and it's important to realize that these are already postganglionic fibers, so these have synapsed in the sympathetic chain. So again, they are not synapsing in the ciliary ganglion. And that leads us to the assessment question of the video, and that is preganglionic parasympathetic fibers uh, sent to the ciliary ganglion to service the sphincter pupillae muscles are from which nerve? Is it A, abducens? Nope, abducens abducts, right? That's lateral rectus. B, oculomotor. Yep, that sounds pretty good to me because oculomotor has a parasympathetic component to it. Ophthalmic? No, ophthalmic, it may have some uh, sympathetic postganglionic fibers hitchhiking with nasociliary, but there's no parasympathetic component to it. There's no parasympathetic component to optic, nor is there to trochlear. So oculomotor nerve or cranial nerve 3 is responsible for the preganglionic parasympathetic fibers that synapse in the ciliary ganglion, and then the postganglionic fibers are conducted through the short ciliary nerves out to the sphincter pupillae um, and the ciliary muscles of the, uh, of the eye. Thank you so much for your time, and I'll talk to you in the next video.